if you own a GE washing machine like this and it runs and operates and makes a very loud, terrible noise, either when it agitates or either when it spins, I wanna show you some different things you can look at on this machine that could cause the bad noise issues. And we're talking about grinding and whirring noises, not necessarily bumping noises that could indicate a bad suspension system. That's gonna be kind of a different separate thing, but we'll kind of go over that too in this video as well. Uh, so let's get to it and figure out why the machine would not be sounding proper. In general, the culprit is often underneath the washing machine so let's go ahead and start there and make sure that the machine is unplugged. Next, you'll need to have the washing machine placed in a way where you can lay it almost nearly on its back, but make sure to watch out for the drain hose as you don't want to have it lower than the bottom of the machine or else any water that's left in the unit will drain out in the hose on the floor. So place a box behind the unit to keep it slightly elevated. Make sure to pay attention to the lid moving as well as we tip the machine over you could use some tape to secure it in place, but I have the drain hose in it so it won't work too well. Underneath the machine, do you see any initial issues or damage possible? The plastic cover is a common culprit of issues, but to remove it to look inside, you'll need a 3 8 socket wrench or screwdriver. There are three screws that need removed. Note that one of these screws may have a grounding strap on it, so make note of it during the reinstallation later. With the cover off, Inspect the cover first for damage. You could note things like oil, rubber belt shavings on it, and other such blockages. Next, check the belt and pulley system for issues. Oftentimes on these GE washing machines, the belt could be damaged or shaved or have an obstruction in it, or it could have oil and grease on it, which would prevent the system from running properly. Now to remove the belt, if it is still attached, roll the belt on the two pulleys clockwise or counterclockwise while pulling the belt downward away from the chassis to dislodge the belt. When you have the belt off, next check both pulleys for side to side movement as well as forward and back movement. Are they extremely snug or do they have a lot of rotation in them to where they can freely move to the side or up and down into the gear case? In the situation of the right side pulley, there could be some damage on it on the underneath side where the clutch is. Often the culprit involves the shift assembly. To remove the screw, you're going to need a 9 16 socket wrench or a 15 millimeter socket works as well. You will need to hold on to the black pulley while you turn the socket wrench counterclockwise, and this does take a bit of effort to remove the screw. However, once the nut is off, this pulley is much more difficult to remove. You can use a heavy metal object to tap the black pulley on the back side and slowly rotate it while tapping it to remove it. Or in my case, I had a motor puller like what I have here, and I was able to gently remove this pulley. Either system will work, but for camera purposes, I decided to use the puller because it took a whole lot less time to use. With the pulley off, the most common culprit is the big white plastic gear you see here called the clutch. If the gears of the clutch are worn down, it will often cause the noise that you heard at the very start of the video. Next, if you wanted to unplug the shifter, you do need to unplug the harness first, and we're gonna take it off just real quick to show you. You'll use a 3 8 socket wrench like what we use to take off the belt cover, but be careful because this entire assembly is connected. Once you remove the second screw that holds the shifter assembly in place, the spring will want to jump at you like a xenomorph from Aliens, so be very careful and have your hand on the assembly to remove the entire system. The underside of the black pulley and the white clutch should have very little or no play between them and fit solidly between each other. It's possible only the white clutch is worn, but check both and if the black one is damaged too, it would need replaced and I'll have a link to both of these. If you find that the clutch is bad, make sure that prior to reinstalling the new one, you use something to lubricate both the clutch and pulley system. In this case, I'm using some silicone-based dielectric grease. Make sure to lubricate both the splines on the inside as well as the bottom of the gear like you see here. And if you buy the clutch from the link in the description, it comes with this for free. Sometimes the shifter has gone bad in the process, not allowing the system to shift properly. So you may want to check and see if the shifter needs replaced. The schematic you may have found underneath the washing machine would have the default value, which is 5,700 ohms of resistance in this style of shifter. To test the shifter, 
you need a multimeter set to ohms resistance. When you press the leads into the shift assembly, one pair should get you 0.01 ohms, and the other set for the motor should get you around what is on the schematic itself, which in our case was 7,500 ohms again. If it's more than 10% off in either direction, I would go ahead and replace the shifter. In the case of this one, it's right at the edge of that 10% limit, so I'm going to replace it anyway. I'll have a link to the replacement shifter in the description, but one thing to note is if you test the choice parts shifter, it has a higher wattage motor in it. So if you test this one, or you had one go bad and need to replace it again, the ohm resistance that is correct on this unit is about 3,700 ohms like you see here. When you have to put the clutch and shift assembly back in place, you need to install the clutch spring first, and then the plastic clutch second. The white clutch has a small lip that the spring will nestle into, then the clutch will go into place. This can be kind of difficult having to hold the clutch in the shifter into place, and it's a little bit difficult with a socket wrench. You may want to use a drill instead. Once you have that in place though, make sure that the wire harness is plugged back into the shifter too. To put the pulley back on, simply press it back into place in alignment with the splines of the clutch. Make sure that the side that has ridges match the clutch and press it in slightly. Take your 15 millimeter or 9 16 socket and tighten it as good as you can. It will need to go on quite tight. Finally, to put the belt back on, thread it onto the motor pulley, then press it on the transmission pulley as well. Rotate the transmission pulley clockwise or counterclockwise while holding the belt in place. This will force the belt to stretch onto the pulley rather easy. But if you did have to buy a replacement belt, some of them are very stiff and difficult to get installed, and you could warm it up slightly with a hair dryer first to make it a little bit easier to put onto the pulley assembly. Next, to reinstall the belt cover, you attach the three screws with a 3 8 socket wrench. Now, on the bottom screw, at least from my angle on this unit, I had to reinstall that grounding strap we talked about earlier, which was a little bit difficult to get on camera, but you do get the idea. Next, let's check the tub itself, and it can be pretty tricky to remove the agitator. To start with, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. Carefully turn the agitator until you find a hole at the bottom of the agitator just underneath the agitator veins. It's kind of hard to see this, especially on camera, so I would use a cell phone camera to find the hole in its location. Once you find it, you need to turn the agitator until the hole lines up with an alignment nipple on the bottom of the agitator itself. This could take some time to find it, but once you find it, insert the screwdriver, which could be quite hard, but it will go through the hole in the agitator and kind of pierce onto the inside of the agitator system. A larger screwdriver will make it easier to fit in because it has a tendency to want to slide out when you turn the agitator. The screwdriver will essentially lock the inner and outer agitators into place. Next, you will need to rotate the agitator top clockwise to remove it while ensuring that the screwdriver remains inserted. Depending on your situation, this may be easy for one person or insanely difficult. I would suggest either having a friend hold the tub while you rotate the agitator, or you could invest in an oil filter wrench that you can install to the agitator and then force rotate it by yourself with one hand while the other hand holds the drum in place. Once the agitator is loose, remove it from the tub. And then once that is done, take a 7 16 socket wrench and turn it counterclockwise to remove the bolt that holds the agitator in place. This may be difficult, but I found that removing the agitator base was far easier than the agitator. With all of that out, let's go ahead and inspect the central metal part of the tub. What do you see? In the case of this particular washing machine, it's in very good shape. The nut is clean and there is no damage to it and it is not loose at all. The metal that is beneath this nut is also in excellent brand new shape. Now, if the nut is damaged, it could need replaced. If the metal that surrounds the nut also is damaged or rotting away, sadly the only choice is to replace the tub and gear case, and usually for most people that's going to be go beyond the expense of the washing machine itself. Although the nut is fine, if you did have to remove or replace it, you're going to need either a 33 millimeter deep well socket to remove this, or a very large crescent wrench. To tighten the nut, you do need to turn it counterclockwise to secure it, or clockwise to loosen it for reference, and you would definitely need a hammer or impact gun to achieve this. Once done, go ahead and put the agitator base back in. It will require you to line the splines up of the agitator base with the gear case splines, and then you'll press the agitator on 
and this did take me a few minutes to do. Once done, go ahead and retighten the 7 16 bolt back into place, which should be kind of easy at this point. Finally, reinstall the top of the agitator in place. It will automatically lock going counterclockwise. This will be a piece of cake as opposed to actually taking it out in the first place. These are all the major physical things that could cause a horrible noise issue with your GE washing machine. There are a few other things that could be possibly wrong. The control board could be bad, sending a defective signal to the unit causing the noise, or the transmission itself could be starting to go bad and the gear case will need swapped. You would hear this if you just spin it by your hand very, very fast. In those cases, the cost of the repair may be prohibitive. And I hope at any rate though, that all these ideas helped find your problem. And remember that the links to some of the parts we used in this video are in the description. And I'm gonna have more videos out on this style of GE washing machine soon. Have a great day.